everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with even more wrestling figures. This week, though, we're taking a look at a brand new figure that's not Mattel, not Jazzwares, not Super 7, not Storm Collectibles, not the Road Warriors, not the Freebird, not the Road Warriors. It's Boss Fight Studios, Legends of Lucha Libre, Penta El Cerro M. Before we look at Boss Fight, let's take a look at Penta El Cerro M, or Pentagon, or Pentagon Jr., or Pentagon Dark, or Dark Dragon, Zeus? Jesus, this guy's had a lot of names. What's also crazy is he's not the first guy to use the Pentagon name. Pentagon is a character created by Antonio Peña for his AAA Lucha Libre promotion way back in 1995. Pentagon was created as the evil twin to Octagon, another luchador that's been played by multiple people, but we don't have all day, so let's stick with Pentagon. I guess the idea is he's supposed to be an evil ninja or something? Anyway, like 10 people have had some deviation of the name Pentagon, including Pentagon Black, Pentagon Viper, Pentagon Cito, and there was even briefly a lady Pentagon, Hachi Machi. But we're not talking about those guys and gal. We're talking about arguably the most famous of anyone to hold a Pentagon name, Penta El Cerro Miedo. Since 2012, when he first was introduced as Pentagon Jr., there's been something special about this guy that set him apart. Coming into widespread popularity in 2014 as part of Lucha Underground, where he would become Pentagon Dark and develop the Cerro Miedo Spanish for Zero Fear phrase, Penta would go on to compete in tons of matches across the country for different promotions. With Lucha Underground going bust, Penta and his brother Fenix would eventually make their way to AEW. I would talk about Lucha Underground for longer. It is important, and it has influenced pro wrestling to a great extent, but this video would be an hour long, so maybe let's circle back to it at another time. Anyway, way back before the pandemic, I saw these boss fight figures on display at that Kmart version of E3 that GameStop put on. I can't remember what it was called, and it's not super important anyway. Anyhow, during the pandemic, Raz Holly clued me into these figures finally going up for pre-order. At the time, Penta, Ray Phoenix, and some accessories were available. I pre-ordered Penta as these figures were like $39.99 a piece, and although they are premium collector versions with extra heads, hands, and the like, $40 is a bit steep. It felt like years passed, and I totally forgot I ordered this thing until one day it came in the mail. And at first glance, I must say it looks pretty fucking cool. One thing I will give to Boss Fight is that their packaging can be opened and closed without tearing the shit apart, and it doesn't look like it's tied in there with a bunch of rubber bands, twist ties, or other horse shit. Well, I for one am tired of waiting around, so let's take a look at some Legends of Lucha Libre Premium Collector Penta Cero M by Boss Fight Studios. Cero Miedo! Look how beautifully everything slides right out oh my goodness gracious and if i'm not mistaken if i'm to look in this box i'm thinking we've got like a kind of a, a little top a lid on here but there is no tape no rubber bands no nothing i can just lift the figure out of the box boss fight studios you have earned my respect. Major points on packaging here. Yes, they went the extra mile to, uh, to, to to sell you something for a little bit more, but look at the quality here. This is proprietary. This box was made to hold this figure and only this figure. Every one of these slots was made for the accessory or the figure that went inside of it and nothing else. So they didn't have to figure out a way to thread fucking rubber bands and, and wrap things up in plastic and, and tape shit down to keep it in there. I mean, it's in there. 
And so now we're gonna, I'm gonna take it all out of here and we'll see what it looks like all put together. Cero. Miedo. All right, and so here is what Penta El Cero Miedo looks like outside of the box. Um, he looks, I, I got him in the screaming head um, because it is very, very cool looking. This is a great sculpt. This is probably the biggest selling point for me on on this figure. Um, th there are a couple of minuses, but let's look at the pluses first. Um, his tattoos look pretty good. Um, they look pretty true to life, pretty much looks like what he has in real life. Uh, underside, overside, all the sides. He's got full sleeves on uh, on his arms, and they look like the tattoos. They look like what they're supposed to look like. So that's pretty good. Um, his gear looks pretty legitimate. Um, he has the same little thing here. Um, this is a separate piece. His little waist gimmick, very poseable, as I, as you notice on this figure. Lots of different joints. Lots of different points of uh, posability. Um, is is very very poseable can move the the wrists back and forth and all around um the, the every single little joint it seems like almost has has a point of articulation you've got the double joint on the knee um so you can get the full um kick his kick himself in the ass if you if you want to very very cool i kind of have him in more of a basic with his uh, splayed hands because he doesn't come with fist hands um, for some reason. That's a minus. Um, he does come with three sets of hands. He has grabbing hands. He has splayed hands like we have uh, displayed here. And he also has the Cerro Miedo uh, on both hands. Um, um, which is, uh, I would say, is a plus. It's pretty cool. You don't really typically see him do it with both hands, but he can. He also has the two heads. He has more of a just sort of standard um, look on his face, more default. Pretty cool, but you can see the detail on the mask with the dragon on the side and then the, uh, the, the Pentagon uh, logo or emblem, whatever the fuck you want to call it, there in the middle, and you can see his, his white eyes and his and his crazy face paint. Very, very cool looking, very awesome. Um, he's got a great, he has a hole in his back for some reason. Are, are they gonna make fucking backpacks for these fucking guys? Is this G.I. Joe? What the, what the fuck? But anyway, very, very cool. Um, but I know um, what everybody wants to see at this point, because we already saw a Penta El Cerro Miedo figure uh, before on the AEW figures. And what is the difference, you say? What is the difference? Well, I'll tell you the difference. The difference is about 20 bucks. This figure costs $20 more than this figure, which as you can tell, um, which I thought for a moment, um, when, I, when I had this in the box, I thought, oh yeah, these are in the same scale. Um, obviously they are not. The AEW figures run a little bigger than these. And I think if I'm, if I'm correct, the AEW figures are running a little bit bigger than the GI Joe figures, uh, which put them in their own weird scale, their own funky scale. Cause I don't think, I think they're smaller than the WWE figures. So they're smaller than the WWE figures. They're bigger than the GI Joes and the, and the other Hasbro, uh, you know, 112 figures. Um, and most of the time wrestlers are big anyway, so you can kind of kind of get away with it kind of fudge it uh, but it does get sort of weird if you want to line everybody up especially when it's such a big fucking difference when you look at the size here the size difference um but what's not really what we're trying to look like i'm not seeing how well these two go together i mean to, to what's the fucking comparison um i'm gonna say uh, for the aew figure the tattoos um look a little bit more realistic they did a little bit better of a job um they, they have more of a realistic looking fade to them as if you know they're on somebody's skin his skin color is closer to what his actual skin color is um but you know this one's still not too bad um the the sculpt on the heads um this only comes with one head you get tongue out pentagon and that's all you get that's all she wrote um, the detail isn't super high um, on this. Every little piece sculpted 
this sculpted the the eye thing sculpted the you know the dragon's not sculpted but the little thing is sculpted um barely anything on the mask is sculpted for uh the aew figure it's all just sort of painted on there um and you know depending on you know your mileage may vary on which figure you get um as to how well this turns out and how good it looks when you get it so um it, you know there's that there now when we get down to the costume details, lots of little the, the stitching and the and, and everything around this, little wrinkles and stuff. Um, not a whole lot of that going on on this one. A lot of it is just painted on. There is some texture and stuff on the AEW figure, but on the Boss Fight Studios figure, a lot more um, tiny little details on there. Um, I mean, it's two different outfits, so you can't super compare them. Um, and they and you do have sculpting on both, but I gotta give it up maybe to this one, with the exception of if you've noticed looking at him. Um, you never see this much of Penta's neck um, because his outfit goes way up into almost a mock turtleneck position. Um, I thought it might have went all the way up at some point, and maybe it does, but they didn't do it like that on the AEW figure. This one, it comes down a little bit lower, almost like a crew neck, and, um, and it was one thing I noticed. The neck ends up looking a little weird. Um, on this figure. Uh, you can't notice as much when he, ha he has this mouth open one, but the closed mouth version of the figure, the figure that was uh, that he was displayed in the box with, um, was a, 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 just a little off. Just a little off. Um, so, at the end of the day, um, is this worth it? I gotta say, not really. Um, when you can buy this figure um, and and soon figures like it, more Pentagon figures that's going to have different heads, uh, different accessories, different stuff like that, um, and actually is going to go with all your other AEW figures, um, and it's half the price of this. Is this, you got to ask yourself, this costs $20 at retail, this costs $40 at retail, and I eliminate shipping from either, either side, because um, you know what, because the only way that you're going to get this is by ordering it online, and, you, and they don't do free ship. So, um, yeah, you're gonna pay $40 plus ship for this figure, and is it worth twice as much as this figure? I gotta say no. I still like this figure. I still like this figure a whole lot, but I don't think it, it it's it's uh, it's better necessarily than the AEW figure when it came down to it it's the price it's really the price without the uh without the big price tag on it had this been a $30 figure i i might have given this the, this the win because of the accessories because of the detail because of the you know the, the little attention that they paid on the on the facial sculpt on the on the mask sculpt very very nice and on the on the costume very nice um i like it i like it a lot. It's it's a sturdy figure. Jamelin told me not to do this. Guess what? Look, it's sturdy. It's not going anywhere. It's not breaking. It's made of medium plastic, not hard plastic, not super soft plastic, uh, but a medium plastic um, that's very durable, and you don't have to worry about this, this breaking down on you, even though it is a high-priced collectible at $40. Um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I would say, um, yeah, the AEW figure's a little bit better if you're a huge fan of Penta and Ray Phoenix, because there's another one, there's a Ray Phoenix that's 40 bucks as well that you can pick up, um, then, you know, you can go with these. They're also going to make some other figures um, in, in, I guess, in the same style without all the extra accessories, and they're going to be $20 a piece. We'll be taking a look at a couple of those when they finally come in the mail. I pre-ordered them not too long ago, and, and we'll see them coming up. Um, and there's also another Pentagon and another Phoenix. I didn't pre-order those. I don't How many fucking Pentas do I need uh, at this point from different companies? Uh, if I'm getting all the AEW figures to begin with, I don't need to get all the Boss Fight Studios Pentagon figures, but uh, I'm, I am eager to see uh, what they do with the uh, more Lucha Libre uh, guys and uh, it, it, as we come into the future. And that is uh, Penta El Cerro Miedo by Boss Fight Studios.